Next, we are picking up in Psalm chapter 38. For those who have been following along, I pray that it's been a blessing to you. A prayer in time of chastening or correction, a psalm of David to bring to remembrance. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure, for your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are full of inflammation and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and severely broken and I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before you, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pants, my strength fails me. As for light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague, and my relatives stand afar off. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all the day long. But I, like a deaf man, do not hear, and I am not like a mute man who does not open his mouth. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear, and in whose mouth is no response. For in you, O Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord my God, for I said, Hear me, lest they rejoice over me, lest when my foot slips they exalt themselves against me. For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity, I will be in anguish over my sin. But my enemies are vigorous, and they are strong, and those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those also who render evil for good, they are my adversaries, because I follow what is good. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. So we see a kind of a difficult situation where David feels that the Lord is rebuking him in his wrath. And maybe you feel that way sometimes, like, God, this is too much for me to bear. He felt sick. There was no soundness in his flesh. Uh, he felt feeble. And there's sighing and panting. And, and basically, he felt like even his friends had abandoned him. Maybe you feel that way at times. He couldn't speak. He couldn't hear. When he slipped, he felt like people were just right there to make his pain worse. And... And he says basically that he would declare his iniquity because he's sorrowful. When we sin as believers, it should bring great sorrow and godly sorrow. As Paul explained to the Corinthians, for godly sorrow leads to repentance. And he says here, I'd be ang anguish. I'm in anguish over my sin. And, but my enemies, they're vigorous and they're strong and they hate me. And those who, are, who, have wrong, who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those who render evil for good, they are my adversaries because I follow what is good. So it's very true that we as believers will suffer even, I mean, I mean, there's times when we do what's wrong and God disciplines us, but Paul and the Holy Spirit encourage us not to suffer for doing evil. But there are times when we do wrong and we suffer the consequences and God teaches us he doesn't forsake us. He's not far from us. And he does make haste to help us. So may God make haste to help you today as you look to him. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. And when you sin, may he make you tender to his Holy Spirit. For he is the source of life. He is the living waters. And if we drink freely of the gift of water that he gives to us, we will never thirst. And when we sin and we turn to him, May he restore the joy of his salvation to us, and may we walk in righteousness. May we walk in such a way that the world sees authenticity, truth, mercy, and what they need, which is Jesus Christ. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tonight as we continue in John chapter 7.